Let's see. I shared one video on the group. Okay, that that's the computer programs that we did. Yes. Which one was there in that? Bubble sort was there. Like increment and decrement. So both the books it's very little different in both like how they have explained no so i'm just seeing from your school book like how it is explained because i've never seen this i always teach from hiraf dalal it's just to the point and that's it no extra information okay anyway so organic chemistry is a branch of chemistry in which you learn about carbon compounds compounds that contain carbon so what do you know about carbon do you know its atomic number what is the atomic number of carbon 6 come on first chapter okay so the first chapter so carbon's atomic number is 6 what is its electronic configuration 24 okay so if you see the outermost orbit there are how many electrons four so what does carbon do to become stable it can take four it can give four because it's right in the middle but most of the time it doesn't do both it i mean it never gives or takes what does it do always is it shares it shares four electrons so that it gets four electrons and then it becomes stable with eight electrons okay so it can share those four electrons and because it's right in the middle you no know, four this side four that side and it can share it joins with millions of other elements to form <coughs> millions of compounds okay carbon joins with millions of elements to form millions of compounds can you name some compounds that contain carbon name some compounds that contain carbon tell me any compound that contains carbon Okay, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, huh? glucose, glucose C six H twelve O six. Then everything related to glucose. Not only glucose. Now glucose is a carbohydrate. You know our nutrition, the food that we eat. It needs carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals, and vitamins. So the carbohydrates. When you break down the carbohydrates, you get glucose when you break down the proteins you get amino acids those amino acids are also made up of carbon there is carbon in it fats also it's made up of carbon like carbon is present in all these things all the foods that we eat so whatever we eat contains carbon we are also made up of carbon every cell in our body has carbon in it the plants are made of carbon okay because see the carbon uh, they produce glucose carbon dioxide they take so every cell in the plant is also made up of carbon okay so like that if you see carbon is found almost everywhere in nature in the combined state not in the free state in the combined state that means as a compound in fact more than 90% of all compounds on earth contain carbon what did i say 90% of all elements around us so look at around you what contains carbon here this is wood wood contains carbon okay uh but we all contain carbon this is plastic so that doesn't uh but anything that's from plant or animal contains carbon okay the wood the chair that you're sitting on okay it's all wood so it's made up of carbon uh, what this one this is plastic okay so that's not <laughs> all right now in this chapter you're learning about certain carbon compounds okay not everything certain carbon compounds now you okay let's go to your book there's a table over there the differences between organic and inorganic compounds so organic compounds are compounds that contain carbon so inorganic would be what carbon compounds that yeah. don't contain carbon okay it's not an essential element next second point is solubility in solubility in water so organic compounds they generally do not dissolve in water some of them do but generally they don't dissolve in water inorganic they generally dissolve in water 
third one solubility of solubility in the organic solvents the they dissolve in organic solvents like alcohol benzene and chloroform yeah so there is a rule the rule is organic substances dissolve in organic solvents inorganic solvents will dis sorry inorganic solutes or substances will dissolve in inorganic solvents so water is organic or inorganic what is h2o is there carbon in water no. no so water is inorganic right so the rule states what organic substances will not dissolve in inorganic water right so that is why organic substances don't dissolve in water last one organic compounds they have low melting point and boiling point so they easily decompose on heating so since the melting point and boiling point is low you don't have to heat it so much to very high temperatures for it to decompose means split okay uh, inorganic compounds they have high melting point high boiling point okay so those are few differences again not very important okay now these are the important things here the nature of carbon atom it's on the next page for you unique nature of carbon atom the first point is tetravalency tetra means what three. no tri is three tetra means four, four. so tetravalency means the valency is four okay what is the valency of carbon valency plus 4 or minus 4 okay to be both but since carbon is a non metal they have considered the valency as minus 4 this is the valency of carbon minus 4 okay that means it will take four electrons to become stable okay but what does carbon do to become stable is it shares those four electrons the next word is catenation catenation is the property of carbon atoms to join with other carbon atoms and form a long chain so one carbon will join with another carbon that will join with another carbon that will form join with another carbon and like that thousands and millions of uh, carbon atoms will join and form a single chain of carbon atoms okay that property is called what catenation now how do they form chains when they catenate or when they when catenation occurs they can form chains in different shapes they can form chain as a, they can form straight chains straight chains means just one long chain of carbon atoms they can form a branched chain that means along with the one long chain you can have a branch a carbon forming on a branch and then the third one is a closed chain that is you'll find a circular pattern carbon atoms will join in a circular pattern it's also called a cyclic compound now in this chapter you are not going to learn about cyclic compounds there is only one cyclic compound that you are learning that will be ben benzene okay so you just have to learn the formula of that but the whole chapter you are dealing with straight chains and branched chains is that clear okay mostly with i mean you have both all right then uh, the bond that's formed could be a single bond a double bond or a triple bond now when will it form a single bond single bond means when one electron from this carbon is joining with one electron from this carbon so when just one electron one electron a pair of electron joins you have single bond if you have two pairs of electrons then you have double bond if you have three pairs of electrons combining you have triple bond okay in the second chapter in chemistry you learned about these bonds can you name a compound or an element which had single bond second chapter from memory ha huh? oxygen no it had how many electrons in the outermost orbit chlorine okay chlorine is 17 right so its atomic uh, so its electronic configuration is 2 8 7 so it has seven electrons in the outermost orbit Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many more it needed to become stable? Wow. One. So it joins a single bond with another chlorine chlorine atom. Okay, this is a single bond. So when these two electrons they they join, they form a bond. They share these electrons, and so each of the chlorines will now have eight electrons. Okay, so it's a single bond between chlorine. What about oxygen? <coughs> so what is the atomic number of oxygen? oxygen is 
So what is this electronic configuration? Two six. two six, which means it has six electrons in the outermost orbit. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many does it need? Two. It needs two. So it will form a double bond with another oxygen atom. Okay. And there was also one example of a triple bond. So how many electrons are needed in the outermost orbit to form a triple bond? Three. Five. If there are five, it needs three more. So it shares three. If it has three, you know, then it's a metal. See, the these uh, double, single, and triple bond are only between sharing of electrons. And sharing always takes place only between two non-metals. Keep that in mind. Non-metals and non-metals, they share electrons. And non-metals have four, five, six, seven, or eight electrons in their outermost orbit, not three. Because if it's three, then it becomes a metal. The metals don't have these type of bonds. They only have ionic bonds. Ionic bond is when they give or take an electron. Okay. Yeah. So you need five electrons to form a triple bond. One, two. So nitrogen, nitrogen's uh, atomic number is seven. Its electronic configuration is two comma five. So nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five electrons in the outermost orbit. It needs how many more? Three more. So it will form a triple bond with another nitrogen atom. Okay, is this clear? Yes. Now, carbon can form the single bond, double bond, or even a triple bond with each other. Okay. All right. We'll be seeing that in this chapter. Okay. So, once again, what was tetravalency? Valency 4. Okay, what was catenation? Carbon joining. Yeah, forming long, chain. long chains. Okay, see, carbon undergoes self linking, that is, forming chains. What chains? Straight yeah. chains, branch chains, or <coughs> close chains. The third word is isomers. Now, isomers, you'll understand more later on when we. Uh, start drawing structures okay isomers is a compound having same molecular formula but different structural formula okay molecular formula means when you write it the formula is simple ch4 or c2h7 something like that but when you draw it you can draw that same molecular formula in two different structural forms structural means the structure of how these atoms are arranged can be different okay you will not understand it now too much because yeah, we're not drawing it the first one Yes. Okay, so the word isomers we'll see later on when we start drawing it. Okay, just now you try to remember the definition. They are elements or compounds having the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Just memorize that. Okay, when I draw it, you will understand it better. Okay, then we'll move to. Okay, this also. Once I explain the next topic, we'll come back to this homologous series also afterwards. Okay. So now we'll go to the three types of um, organic compounds that we are studying. The first one is alkanes. Okay. Now alkanes have uh, the general formula of C N H 2 N plus 2. So as you can see from this, Alkanes are compounds that are that contain only carbon and hydrogen, nothing else, only carbon and hydrogen. And the number of atoms of carbon, if it is N, then the number of hydrogen atoms will be 2N plus 2. Okay, next would be alkenes. Alkenes have the general formula CnH2n. That means the number of hydrogens will be just double of. Okay, I'm going a little ahead of myself. Let's let's go to alkanes. Let's see one example of an alkane. Okay, one example. So if the carbon atom is five, then how many hydrogen atoms will be here? Two n means yeah, two n is ten plus two, so twelve. Okay. Now here this example, if there's five hydrogen atoms, I mean five carbon atoms, then hydrogen would be 10. 10. And the third one is alkynes. 
okay alkynes have the general formula cn h 2n minus 2 so if carbon is 5 then h will be 8 did you get this okay so remember these these are the general formulas for alkanes alkenes and alkynes see the name alkanes alkenes alkynes okay now how do you name this what's the name of this so for that we have to look at the number of carbon atoms okay and based on the number of carbon atoms you have different names so if there's one carbon atom we use the word meth if there are two carbon atoms eth if there are three prop four but okay so now if it's an alkane and there's one carbon atom we'll call it methane if there are two then ethane three propane four butane five pentane okay uh, one to four they have their own these are called prefix prefix means what you add in the beginning meth eth prop and but you have to memorize that from five onwards i'm sure you're you're aware of these words five is called what pentane have you heard pent pentagon five sided shape right six is called what hexane again hex is a common word hexagon right the shape with six sides is a hexagon then seven is he seven is hept okay so heptane eight is octane you heard of oct no oh, what is oct tell me something that's eight hmm Octagon, like octagon, octagon. Yeah, correct, exactly. Mm. So, eight-sided shape is called octagon. Or is octopus called octopus? It has eight tentacles or limbs or whatever, right? Any other word with oct? Hmm? Octane pen. Octane pen. I don't know why that is oct. Must have something to do with eight, but oct means eight. Why is October? Is October the eighth month? No, it's the tenth month. So there was some calculation naming changes, like they had to add two months in the beginning. Okay, that is some history you need to know. But it was actually the eighth month. Then they added two more months somewhere in the beginning, so it got pushed to the tenth month. No. Okay, all these uh, months are like that. I was saying it like that because it sounds like that. Yeah, actually, correct. You're right. October was called October because it was the eighth month. Okay, then nine is called non, non-in. See November. November was supposed to be the ninth month, but it became the eleventh month. And then decade. See December. Okay, but it was supposed to be tenth. It became twelfth. So again, these words are all common. They are used everywhere. The only uncommon words are number one to. Four that you have to memorize. So one carbon atom would be called meth. Meth. That ane would differ. Okay. Now if it's an alkane, then it would be methane. If it's an alkene, it would be methene. And if it's an alkyne, it would be methine. Okay. But anyway, there is no methene and methine. Everything else is there. So let's talk about this element. What is this element? C five H. Sorry, this compound. This is pentane. C five H twelve is pentane. Why pent? Five carbon. Why ane? Because it's an alkene. What is C five H ten? That would be pentene. You understand? Pent because five carbons. Ene because it's an alkene. And C five H eight would be pentine because five carbon so pent and ine alkene so pentine. You understand? So naming is easy. Naming is fun. <laughs> you can guess the names easily. Now I'll give an element. You tell me what is its name. Okay, C four H ten. Hmm. Butane. Why but? Because it has four carbons. Why in? It's an alkene. No, this ten is two into four. That's eight plus two. Okay. What about C six H ten? My pen. Hexine. 
hex because there are six carbons. Yes. And what is two, two into six? 12 minus, 12 minus two, this is. So minus two means it's alkyne, right? <laughs> so hexane. Clear everyone, naming? One more. C8H16. Hmm? So, oct because it's 8. Then you look at the 16. No, what is it? Is it plus 2, minus 2, or just without adding or minusing? Yeah, just 2n, no? Double of 8 is? Uh, so, that's an alkene, right? So, this is octene. Is that clear, everyone? Okay. Not All right. Now, there are a few more things. Alkanes all have single bonds. Okay, we're going to draw this next. So, remember, alkanes have all single bonds between the carbon atoms. For example, if you're drawing, uh, what is this? C5H12? Pent? Pentane. So there are five carbon atoms, right? Between all the five carbons, you will have what type of a bond? Single bond, okay? Alkenes will have one double bond and alkynes will have one triple bond. So if you're drawing this C5H10, you'll have five carbon atoms, but in between one of the, between two carbon atoms, you will have a double bond. Means you'll have one double bond in that whole chain. For alkynes, how it is? You'll have one triple bond. Okay. So let's draw these, then you'll understand much more clearly. Okay. Okay, so let's draw C5H12. So this is how you draw. First, you draw C5. That means you draw five carbons. Like this. Okay, this is the first step. Now, second step is every carbon should have four bonds because carbon is tetravalent. It needs four bonds. So what you do is around each carbon, you fill it up with four bonds. See this carbon, it already has one bond, right? So we have to add three more bonds. Next carbon, how many bonds are already there? One. Two are there on both the sides, right? So we have to add two more. Then this carbon, how many are there? So we need two more. Here, how many more? Here, how many more? Three. Okay. So fill up all the carbons with four bonds each. Then all these empty bonds that are there, you fill it up with hydrogens. This is how you draw a structural formula. Now you understand what structural formula? This, what I've written here, C5H12 is the molecular formula. And this, what I've drawn here is the structural formula. So what was that word isomerism that we saw before? They have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Okay, that means they, 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 look, they look the same, C5H12. Molecular formula will be like that. But when you draw it, the structures can be different. But they'll have the same number, 5 carbons and 12 hydrogens. But it will be in a different order. That's an isomer. Okay. All right. Let's draw an alkene now. Now, what is the rule of an alkene? Two double bond. One double bond. One. Between two carbons, there will be one double bond. Okay. So first step, again, we draw five carbons. Now, between any of this, there will be a double bond. So let's take the double bond over here. Remaining everywhere, we have to draw single bonds. Okay. Now, fill the carbon with bonds. Second step is put bonds. So here around this carbon, how many bonds are needed? Two bonds, because there are already two, right? So we need two more. So put one on top, one here. Even if it's to the side, doesn't matter. Okay, this carbon, how many more bonds? Two or one? One. Only one, because see, there are one, two, three bonds already there. So only one more is needed. This carbon, how many more? This carbon? This carbon? Three. Okay. 
Then you fill the rest with hydrogens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, automatically it will become ten. You don't have to do anything. In this first one, how many hydrogens were there? Twelve. Twelve. Automatically, if you put single bonds everywhere, you will get twelve carbons. Oh, sorry, twelve hydrogens. Did I have to count and put ten hydrogens here? No, I just filled up the gaps. It became ten automatically. Is that that? Now let us see alkynes C five H eight. So I have five carbons. Now one of them will have triple bond. We can put it anywhere. Where do you want to put it? Here or here? Now let me tell you one thing. Putting it here or in the last is the same. It's just like you are mirroring it. Correct. So putting here and putting in the last is exactly the same. Same way, putting it he here and here will be the same. Correct? See, you can look at it from behind also, right? If you look at it from behind, this will automatically come at this point. It's like a mirror, okay? So how many forms are there for, carb for this, what we're going to draw right now? What is this? Pentine, yeah. How many forms can we draw pentine in? Only two forms. One is when the triple bond is here, and the second option is when the triple bond is here. Because this over here is same as this, and putting in the last here is same as the first one. Okay? All right, so let's put the triple bond over here. Then remaining everything will have single bonds. Okay, here how many? One. Here? No need to draw, because already there are four bonds. Here? Two. Here. 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 Fill up the remaining with hydrogens. You will automatically have how many hydrogens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see that? Did you understand how to draw these? So, what you have learned is you have learned how to draw alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Okay? Three steps. First step was what? To first to put the carbons. carbons. Second step is to put the bonds. Third step is to put the hydrogens. Clear everyone? Okay. Yeah, draw this this much. <coughs> now I'm going to I'm going to give you some uh, formulas and you have to draw the structural formula and tell me the name of that. Do like this. Write the formula, then write the name, and then under that you draw it. What's the name of this, Kathy? Prop. Huh? In. 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 Hmm. Then draw the structure underneath it. Remember, alkanes have what type of bond? Single bond. Alkenes will have one double bond, not two double bond, only one. And alkynes will have one triple bond, not three. One triple bond. Okay. See what you all did. You all first step is what? Listen, your first step was wrong. Even uh, Hemel also. Okay. First step is what? Second step is what? Draw, draw the bonds. Now, where you draw the bond? How many bonds you will draw? Like, you have to put. See, first you need to know whether this is an alkane, alkane, or alkyne. So we found out that this was alkyne, which means it needs a triple bond. Now you can put the triple bond anywhere. What you all did was you put the triple bond here, right? Now what I'm saying is, put the triple bond. That is correct. What you all did is correct. But an isomer is how isomer will have the same molecular formula, but the structure will be different, right? So now you put the uh, triple bond over here and try drawing the same thing. Can you do that? Okay, then second, what you have to do, Kathy? Here you have to put single bonds everywhere first. Then you start putting extra bonds. Got it? Do this. Okay, so you have drawn uh, two isomers for this compound. What is this compound called? Hexine. Hexine. So you have drawn two isomers for hexine. Now, here, like you do the two isomers by changing the position of the triple bond. Okay. So like this, you can draw isomers different in different ways also. This type of isomers 
by changing the position of the triple bond are called position isomers. Because what you change is you change the position of the, the bond, the triple bond. Okay. So there are different types of isomers. First one is chain isomers. In chain isomers, you will actually change the whole structure of the chain itself. Like uh, butene, butene means four carbon. So you can draw the four carbons in one single long straight chain. You can also draw butene like this, where three carbons are in one chain and one carbon is a branched chain. Yes, sir. That also is four carbons. So these two are different. They're, they're, what is different is there? The chain, the structure of the chain. So these two isomers are called chain isomers. What you do right now is you change the position of the double bond or the triple bond. So that type of isomer is called position isomers. Then you have geometrical isomers. This is not very important for you, but in geometrical isomers, you just change the position of uh, elements. For example, this hydrogen, instead of putting it up here, what if I put it to the side here? You understand? So changing the position of that hydrogen also could form another isomer. That is called geometrical isomer. See over here, what was different between these two? What did they change? This is not there, okay? This is just the name of the whole compound. That was the molecular formula. So the this CH3 and this hydrogen were interchanged. So it is still from the same carbon atom, but instead of putting it like this, they put it the other way. See, that is geometric isomer. Instead of putting the two hydrogens up and down, what if I put it to the left and down? That's it, right? You're changing <clears throat> the angle. Even the angle also makes a difference. All right. Anyway, you don't have angles and all in this chapter. So we don't learn too much about geometrical isomers in 10th standard. You're only learning these two, chain isomers and position isomers, okay? Now we're going to draw the same, okay, what is this? Hexide, but as a chain isomer, as a chain isomer. So how we'll do this? Instead of drawing six carbons in a line, we will only draw five carbons in a line. And one carbon, we can draw it as a branched chain, either over here, or we can draw it here. You understand? Don't put it in the front. Because if you put it in the front, then it is like a continuous single chain only. Only thing it's bent. But this is still a straight chain. If you want a branched chain, you have to put the carbon where? Somewhere in between. So it can be over here. Or it can be over here. Like this. What about here? This will be same as this. In mirrored form. Correct. So only two you have. Either after the second carbon or after the third carbon. Okay. So do it here. Put it over here. Now you need a triple bond. Where do you put the triple bond? Just put it in the front. Okay. Or anywhere actually. But let's put the triple bond over here. But actually you see. Is this possible? Look at this carbon. How many bonds it has? Already has four. So you can't put a bond here now. Yes. You saw that? Down this has to be there. This also has to be there. So the bond. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So can we put it here? Yes. Can't put it here because see this carbon, it has one, two, three, four, five. Can I put it here? Yes, I can put it here. Okay. So put it here like this. So now you have a uh, chain isomer of Hexine. This is possible, right? Yes. Okay, complete this structure of hexane. Okay, so let's look a little more about the differences between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So, alkanes have another word, they're also called as paraffins. These are words you need to remember and memorize. Paraffins. Alkenes are called olefins. Okay. Paraffins, olefins, and uh, alkynes, they don't have any other name. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of the word saturated? But olefins is making you laugh. 
Is it some other word now, Marathi word or something? Hmm. Now tell me, what is the meaning of saturated? If I say something is saturated, means what? Huh? Settled. No. If I give you a hot drink and I say this is saturated with bonvita, means what? It's mixed with maximum amount of bonvita. If you add any more bonvita, what will happen? Huh? Tell. It won't dissolve. What? Because see, when you put bonvita, it dissolves in the milk, right? But if you put too much bonvita, then there's no place for that bonvita to dissolve in the milk. So it is maxed out. Do you understand? That is called saturated. So now here, alkanes are saturated. What does this mean? It means you cannot add anything to an alkane. Now, if you look at this alkane over here. Okay, go. Let's do bottle test. Okay, look at this. <coughs> this alkane here. You see how many hydrogens it had? It had. <coughs> How many hydrogens? It had 12. That's max. Okay. Can you add any more hydrogens anywhere? No. You can't add. So alkanes are all saturated. You can't add anything to a to an alkene. Now let's look at alkene. Look at this alkene here. How many hydrogens were here? 10. 10. Which means you can add two more and make it 12. How do you do that? You have to cut off one of the double bond. So then you have one place for one bond here. And here one place for a bond. You see that? So alkenes they are unsaturated because you can add something to it you can add hydrogen or chlorine or anything else can be added to this how by breaking the double bond you understand so alkenes are unsaturated what about alkynes they're also unsaturated because see, there's a triple bond there is place for many more see i can cut off one of this so then i can add one here one here i can also cut this also then I can add one here, one here. So I have place to add four more atoms in alkynes. Got that? In alkanes, can we add anything? No. no. In alkenes, how many atoms can we add? No. Two. In alkynes, how many can we add? No. Four. Okay. So therefore, alkanes are called, no, 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 saturated. Saturated means what? You can't add anything. We're talking about that, no? Can we add anything or not? These two are called unsaturated. Is that clear? Add that to your, what you have written. Okay. Now listen. Now since alkanes are saturated, you can't add anything to it, right? So addition reactions cannot take place for alkanes. What's an addition reaction is? Two things adding to form one bigger compound, right? two smaller molecules joining to form a bigger molecule. That type of reaction cannot take place for alkenes, right? Because you can't add anything to an alkene. Alkene it is saturated. <coughs> so the only type of reaction that can take place for alkenes are substitution reaction. Substitution means what? Like if you want to add something here, I need to take out one hydrogen and then add something in its place, like a chlorine or a fluorine or anything else, okay? But in an alkene and alkyne, you can have addition reactions. I showed you how to add, right? You break the, the, the double or triple bond and then you can add new atoms to this molecule. Got it? So what type of reactions can take place in alkenes? In alkenes, what type of reaction? Substitution. Only substitution reactions. And for unsaturated, you can have substitution or addition. Done? Okay, lastly, we're going to see about the cyclic chains. There were three types of chains. What are the three types of chains? Chain. First was? Chain. Straight chain. Then branch chain. And then closed chain or cyclic chain. Okay, now there are two types of cyclic chains. We're not learning too much about cyclic chains, but just a little bit. So the first type of cyclic chain is called alicyclic chain. Alicyclic. Alicyclic chains are made up of minimum three carbons, could be three, four, five, but they are forming a circular chain. So if it's three carbons, it'll look something like this. If it's five, then just put five in a line. This is five. It's not only carbon, okay? Along with the carbon, there has to be something else, like hydrogen or something else. Oh, by the way, there's one more thing. 
see this uh, all these structures that you do right now what we call them structural formula right yes you have branch this is actually called branched structural formula branched means you are branching out everything even the hydrogens you are showing them as separate branches so this is called branched structural formula there is one more structural formula where you don't branch the hydrogens you only branch the carbons hydrogens you keep it with the carbon let's i'll show you one example like look at this uh what is this ethene right c2h4 eth and it's in so instead of drawing the hydrogen separately what you can do draw only the carbon separately hydrogens how we'll do we'll draw it here next to it so how many carbons how many how many hydrogens does this carbon have no hydrogens so put ch2 okay now this carbon also has how many hydrogens to put h2 now don't put the h here just put the h on the other side just because we want to show that the bond is between the carbon not the hydrogen we can't always do it like for example here here we'll draw 1 2 3 three. three carbons and uh, okay let's start with the right side this carbon has how many hydrogens three so h three this carbon has how many hydrogens h2 see here we can't avoid we are showing that this bond is to the hydrogen but we have no choice here we can show the hydrogen instead of showing it on the left side i mean instead of showing it on the right we will draw the hydrogen on the left so how many hydrogens three see this is both are same this method of drawing is called branched structural formula this is called condensed structural formula condensed means what compressing right here you are not compressing you are opening it out so branched branched structural formula and condensed structural formula is that clear now in your book mostly you will see condensed structural formula because it's hard to draw all the branches okay so like for here how many hydrogens are needed for this carbon two bonds are already there so two more bonds so ch2 this carbon two this carbon also two so don't draw the h over here you can draw the h on the left side okay to show that it's a carbon that is bonded anyway so <coughs> these are examples of alicyclic uh what alicyclic chains alicyclic chains it could have single bond it could have double bond it could have triple bond can it have can you have a triple bond yeah no see this carbon has four bonds this carbon also has four bonds yeah so you can have but in your book you don't have triple you have maximum till double bond the second type of cyclic chain is called aromatic now aromatic what's the meaning of aroma nice smell right perfumes have a sweet aroma you heard that word so aromatic compounds they have a nice smell okay now aromatic compounds they have at least one benzene ring now what is this benzene ring benzene ring is six carbons in a chain where there are double bonds in alternate positions that means here double bond then single bond and double bond single bond double bond single bond this structure is called a benzene ring benzene ring and aromatic compounds will have at least one benzene ring It could have more than one benzene ring but this structure is called a benzene ring is that clear now sometimes uh, all these cyclic compounds they will be drawn without the carbons just will draw like this double bond okay like this okay they'll just write like this without the carbons and then they'll show the double bond okay here double bond here double bond here double bond like this this is another way to draw this here how will we draw this if it's all single chains then like this ha huh? just a pentagon and this how we'll write just a triangle okay so this is another way to draw it that's all we're learning today so what all yeah you write this first write this first okay now let us look at the whole list of alkenes the whole list of alkenes and the whole list of alkynes okay 
So tell me all the alkenes. Okay, we'll just draw the structure. So first one is methane. Uh, revision of yesterday's once again, Umar. Uh, this is for you especially. There are the naming system is there. Okay, if there's one uh, carbon, then we'll start with the word meth, M E T H. If there are two carbons, then eth. If three carbons, prop. Four carbons, but. Five carbons, pent. Six carbons, hex. Seven, hept. Eight, oct. Nine, non. And ten is dec. Okay, then if it's an alkane, it'll be methane, ethane, propane. If it's an alkene, then ethene, propene, butene. And if it's an alkyne, then ethyne, propyne, butyne, pentyne, and so on. Okay, right. So let's write down all the alkanes. We'll just write the formulas. So the first alkane is methane, and the formula is CH4. How have we got CH4? So C was one, and the general formula is CNH2 and plus two. So that means one. Okay, so two into one, two plus two, four. Okay, that's why it is CH4. The next alkane is what? C two H two two zero four plus two six. The next alkane is C three H eight. Right, two three zero six plus two. That's eight. What are you getting it? The next alkane is with four carbons, so that will be C four H. Umar, tell me ten. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so these are some alkenes. We're not writing all; just four are enough. Now for alkenes, the first alkene is not methane, okay? Because methane would be C one H two, it would be, and C H two is something else which we're going to study now. So there is no C H two. The first alkene starts from ethene. So ethene's formula is C two H. No, here it is uh, for alkenes. The formula is CNH two N. So just double the carbon numbers for hydrogen. So two means four. C three means six. C four means eight. You understood for alkenes? You're doubling the number of sing. And then for alkynes, the general formula is CNH two N minus two. Again, if you put uh, first carbon. C one, then H will be how much? Two into one minus two. H will be zero. N is one means two into one, two minus two is what? Zero. So it will just be carbon, right? So that's why you don't have the first alkyne. There is no methane. The first alkyne starts from ethane. So ethane will be. So if n is two, two into two, four, four minus two, two. So H two. This is the first uh, alkyne. The second alkyne that is propyne. Propyne would be C three H. Three twos are six minus two, four, and then C four. Four twos are eight minus two, six. Okay. So these are uh, some of them. Now we're going to see the difference between any two consecutive alkenes, alkenes or alkynes. So minus these two. Now, if you look at these two, let's see what is the difference between this. So minus three minus two, one. So there's a C, one carbon, and H eight minus H six will be H two. Okay. So the difference between any two is CH two. Let's look at the next one. What's the difference here? Same CH two. Did you see? It's three and four. So one carbon. And eight and ten, that's two. So it's CH two. Now look at the alkynes. What's the difference between two alkynes? Two, three, four, six. So again, CH two. One carbon and two hydrogen difference. Here also, one carbon difference and two hydrogens different. Look at the alkynes also. One carbon different and two hydrogens. Everywhere you will see that the difference between any two consecutive hydrocarbons. In a series, this is called a series. In the series is CH two, right? So this series is called a homologous series. Where is that word? Here, homologous series. <coughs> H 
think all the alkenes is one homologous series. All the alkenes is another homologous series. Alkynes are all a homologous series. Why they're called homologous series is because there is a difference of CH2. So like this, there are many homologous series. Till now we have learned how many homologous series? Three. Alkanes is one homologous series. Alkenes is another. Alkynes is another. In your book, you have totally six homologous series. We have, we have seen three. We're going to study three more. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. You know what the other three? Alcohols. Then something called aldehydes and carboxylic acids. Okay, so we'll be seeing that today. Okay, so these are six different homologous series that we have. Can you see the topic 12.9 homologous series? Okay, so let's read it. A homologous series is a group of organic compounds. See, this is a group. All the alkanes is one group of organic compounds. Okay, having similar structure. Is the structure similar for all the alkanes? The structure is similar means they have a general formula, CnH2n plus 2. That is the general formula. So all of those elements in that series have the same structure and similar chemical properties. So their properties are also are similar. All alkenes have similar properties. In which the successive compounds, successive means the compounds next to each other, differ by a CH2 group. So two successive compounds, they differ, means they have a difference of a CH2 group. Did you understand what's the homologous series? So how many, how many homologous series we are studying? Six. Six. What are the three homologous series we have studied? Alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Okay. Next topic. Now, to a branch, a single straight branch, if you have a straight branch of carbons, okay, to um, say the carbon is also completed with hydrogens, and so this is an alkane. Okay. Now, to this, you can have a branch that is attached to this, right? And what is attached to this branch? is called an alkyl group. Whatever is attached to this branch is called an alkyl group. Okay, So you have two types of groups that are attached to the main chain. One is an alkyl group and one is a functional group. So we'll see what an alkyl group is and what a functional group is. Okay, But what are these two things? They are attached to the main carbon chain. Okay. Now, an alkyl group is represented with the alphabet R. It has a general formula of Cn H 2n plus 1. This is the general formula of an alkyl group. Where is the alkyl group attached? To the main carbon chain. Okay. So, say we attach it over here, then that whatever is in the form of Cn H 2n plus 1 will be called the alkyl group. For example, if I write C2H, what will it be? If there are two carbons, then hydrogen will be? N is 2, so 2 twos are 4 plus 1, C, C2H5, right? So this will be, this is the alkyl group. And the name of this alkyl group will be, what is C2? Eth, eth, not ethane, because ethane will be C2H6. So this will be called ethyl. Because alkyl group, no, you put ile at the end. So with two carbons, it will be ethyl. Is that clear? If it has three carbons, that would be C3H7. So this, what would be the name of this alkyl group? Propyl. Do you all understand? Uh, C6H. 13. Its name would be? Hexile. Are you, all of you getting it? Yeah. So these are all uh, alkyl, groups. alkyl groups that are attached to the main carbon chain. Okay. So that is one group that can be attached. The next one is functional group. Now functional group, there are many. Alkyl groups also, there were many, but they had the general formula and everything. For functional group, you have many different types of uh, those, we can call them many things, okay? Functional group could be, <clears throat> where is that? It could be an atom, it could be a radical or a bond. 
a functional group could be any of these things an at atom that's attached to it or a radical or a bond see even bond that means even a double bond or a triple bond is also a functional group you understand so alkanes they don't have double or triple bond they have all single bonds so they don't have that uh, bonds as a functional group but alkenes have a double bond and alkynes have triple bond so they have this bond as a functional group but other than the bond also there are many other things like atoms and radicals so let's see some of them so one first one is oh second one is cho third one is cooh and the fourth one is a halide okay we'll we'll come to that later on so the first functional group what is it oh oh is um oh is called a hydroxyl group okay oh is called hydroxyl and if oh is present at the end i mean is is present in that carbon chain then this whole compound is called an alcohol so alcohol is your fourth homologous series what is the first homologous series first second and third alkanes alkenes alkynes the fourth homologous series is alcohols so when do we call it alcohol is if there is a hydroxyl group what is a hydroxyl group <laughs> hydroxyl group is oh so if there is oh like for example here attached to this there is oh like this huh? then this oh is the functional group what's the name of the functional group hydroxyl group and this whole compound is called an alcohol it belongs to an alcohol not alkene not alkene not alkyne alcohol separate homologous series is that clear <clears throat> then other than oh you have cho ch is cho is called aldehydic what no this is called aldehydic and that uh, homologous series are called aldehydes so sure. so what is cho what is that group called aldehydic group and the whole compound is called Aldehyde. that group of compounds yeah the series of compounds are aldehydes <clears throat> the third functional group is cooh <clears throat> cooh is called carboxylic and those compounds are called carboxylic acids is this clear so now we have seen how many different homologous groups homologous series six different <clears throat> tell me all the six <clears throat> alkenes alkenes alkynes alcohols aldehydes and carboxylic acids is that clear <laughs> only four what there's everything i'll show you see page 188 There's a small table over there. <clears throat> Or better, page one ninety two. You have the whole table, big table. Yes. In fact, not six. You have eight in your book. Yeah. Go to page one ninety two. See alkenes, alkenes, alkynes, then alcohols, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, then alkyl halides. which is also a functional group then ketones and ethers now we don't study ketones and ethers too much are you on page 193 yes. page 193 the whole yes. list of all the different homologous groups are there okay we'll go to the fourth one the fourth one are halides now this word halides does it sound similar to anything that you have learned before hal halogens what are halogens hmm huh halogen like group 7 yes. chapter 1 group 7 is what 
They're called halogens. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. So the halogens are called halides. So we have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Enough. Okay, it goes more, but we don't we only need to know that much. What is that X? X means all the other ones. So they are called, we don't use fluorine, we call it fluoro. So fluoro, then this is chloro. Bromo and iodo. That are the names. Those are the names for these uh, functional groups. Okay, so they are called halides, and those uh, compounds will be called alkyl halides. Okay, let's let's go into more detail in uh, alcohols, aldehydes, and carboxylic acids. Now. Um, we saw the naming. How do we name them? We saw. If there's an alkyl group, the name, how will the name be? Ail. Right. You'll put ail at the end of that alkyl group. If there's a functional group and there's OH, the name of the whole compound change. Instead of, instead of calling it as methane or methine or methyl, we'll call it methanol. So what we have to do is we have to put O L at the end of it, end of the name. So if it's ethane and there's an alcohol, what we'll call it? Ethanol. If there's <laughs> propane and there's an alcohol, propanol. So tell me all the alcohols from beginning. First is methanol, then ethanol, propanol, butanol, pentanol, hexanol, heptanol. Eight is octanol, nonanol. Decanol. Okay? Non. All. Put OL at the end of the word. You don't have more than five. Mostly they'll ask only first five. Okay? <clears throat> now, the general formula for alcohols is CN H 2N plus 1 OH. This is the general formula. So now tell me if N is equal to 1, what's the formula? C one H three OH. This is the formula for what's the name of this? Methanol. methanol. Have you heard of methanol? Yes. What is it? Methanol is, is an alcohol. Now tell me N is equal to two. What is that? C two. Tell me the formula first. C2 H5 OH. So this would be ethanol. Okay. Methanol is extremely poisonous. If you drink even one sip, what will happen? You will die. Ethanol is the safer to drink and it can be drunk in moderation. If you drink it, it's alcohol and you know what happens when you drink alcohol. Okay. So the you understand the difference between both? So these are all alcohols. Now there are so many alcohols. You saw that. If N is equal to 3, you have another alcohol. What is the name of that alcohol? Propanol. 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 What do you know about propanol? You know, you've heard of propanol? It's a fuel. I think so. Propanol fuel. Okay, let's see. What is propanol? Let's check here only. Propanol is used as a solvent or it is used to produce other solvents such as antifreeze, lacquer formation, that is for painting, Soaps, dye solutions, dye means colors, window cleaners, and more. Compounds of propanol like isopropanol. Ah, isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, you've heard? Isopropyl alcohol? Like if you want to clean something, like screen, before putting a screen guard, they'll give no an alcohol swab, you have to clean it like this and then put the screen. That is isopropyl alcohol. Okay, they are compounds of propanol. Okay, so each of these alcohols have a different use. Let us see what uh, is present in petrol. What is the component of petrol? See this. Gasoline or petrol has 4 to 8% of alkanes, 2 to 5% alkenes, 25 to 40% isoalkanes. Iso means it's the uh, same molecular formula but different structural formula. What is it? Isomers, right? So an isomer of alkane is isoalkane. Three to seven percent cycloalkanes, cyclic. 
Okay, so you see all of these components only organic chemistry only is like all these hydrocarbons are present in petrol. Let's see fuel, just the word fuel. See, where do you find hi, hi, uh, these hydrocarbons? Crude oil, natural gas, coal, that is all the fossil fuels. Hydrocarbons are highly combustible and the main, see the main thing about all these hydrocarbons are what? They're combustible. Combustible means they burn, they catch fire. Have you ever taken alcohol and put in fire? Spray, deodorant has alcohol in it. You put in spray, huh? Sanitizer, yeah, all these have alcohol in it. Uh, they, they catch fire, okay? So they're all good fuels. See, which are used as fuels? Methane, propane. Yeah, so not propanol, but propane itself. Okay, they are present in fuels. You know CNG? What is CNG? Natural gas. So what is the main constituent of natural gas? Look at this. Methane, CH4. Okay. Most of uh, CNG is methane. Okay. Okay, so did you get an idea a little bit more of hydrocarbons? Most of them are fuels. We'll go to the next one, aldehydes. Okay, now aldehydes general formula is CnH2NO. Okay, but we don't write it in this form. Remember aldehydes need what at the end? See, we wrote it here. CH. Aldehydes need CHO. See, hydro alcohols need OH. Yes, there is OH. And aldehydes need CHO, but there's no CHO here. So what you have to do is you have to take out a C, a H, and a O from the whole compound and put it at the end. I'll show you an example. So let's take N is equal to 1. So put N is equal to 1. What will the aldehyde be? C1, H2, O. And N is equal to 2 would be what? C, 2, H, 4, O. Right? Yeah. But this is not the final formula. You have to put CHO at the end. So let's do for the N is equal to 2. It's more easier. So put CHO at the end. So what is remaining? No, no, no. C2, there are two carbons. There are four hydrogens. There is one oxygen. From that, you have taken one carbon, one hydrogen, one oxygen. One so remaining carbon, one, three three hydrogen. Hydrogen. Mm. one carbon, three hydrogens. That's it. Right. So this is the formula for that compound. So what's the name of this compound? It has two carbons. So eth. Yeah, and I didn't tell you the name. The name would be al. You have to put al at the end. Just like how here you put all. For aldehydes, you have to put al at the end. So this one's name would be ethanol. This is ethanol. This is ethanol. Now here, this CH3OH was methanol. So this compound would be methanol. But I have to modify it, right? I have to put CHO at the end. So if you put CHO at the end, what is remaining? Hmm? Only one H is remaining. So this is the formula. This is... Yeah, this compound is called methanol. And this one is methanol. Is it clear, everyone? Okay. Now, look at this very... Uh, let me, let's me let do the next one also. N is equal to 3. So that would be C, 3, H, 6, O. Okay, but then modify the formula, put CHO at the end. So you have C2H5, right? And what's the name of this compound? Propanol. Propanol, okay? All right, now think like this. Propanol has how many carbons? Propanol, prop three. But if you look at the formula, there's only two here because the third one is inside here. Okay. So don't just go with this C and don't look at this and say, oh, C2 means eth. No. You have to look at the total number of carbon atoms in the whole molecule. Do you understand that? Okay. Next, we'll go to carboxylic acid. Now, carboxylic acid also has 
something very similar to the aldehydes. Okay, so carboxylic acids formula is very similar to aldehyde. It is CN, H, 2N, O, O2. Two oxygens, that's all. Here, one oxygen, here, two oxygens. Awake? Okay. So, tell me, N is equal to 1. What will be the formula? C, H2, O2. But is this is the final, is this the final formula? No. no, carboxylic acid should have what? It has to have COOH. Okay. Yes. And the naming also. <clears throat> the naming will have at the end oic acid. <clears throat> oic acid. Okay, so this is methanol, this will be methanol, this will be methanoic acid. Ethanol, ethanol and ethanoic acid. Propanol, propanol, propanoic acid. Got the naming? So let's write on the formula now. So at the end we need a COOH. So what is remaining? H. Only H. Yes? yes. So this is the formula for? Methanoic acid. Next, N is equal to 2 would be what? C2 H 4 O2. Yeah, but let's take our COOH outside. So remaining you have C H3. None. None, right? Because both the oxygens, only two are there, and that's taken part, it's part of the COH. This one's name would be what? Ethanoic acid. Okay, did you get an idea of alcohols, aldehydes, and carboxylic acid? Yes. That's all. Chapter is not over, there's much more, okay? But this is the next part. So, write down this much. You all write till 4, n is equal to 4. Fill up this table till, in fact, till 5 as your homework. In this table itself, continue writing till n is equal to 5. You understood? Just like how we wrote, but fill it up till 5. So formula with the name. <coughs> yeah, I think we can directly go into the naming now, okay? Because we have studied everything there is to know so that we can start naming. Like in the homologo series, we have studied all the six different homologo series, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, aldehydes, and carboxylic acid. So I'm sure all of you are familiar with that now. Yeah, yeah. Then after that, we have also learned uh, the different functional groups, like how the naming system goes. That if you have an alcohol, that is if you have OH, then the name will be all. If you have an aldehyde, that is CHO at the end, and then you'll name it as al. If you have a COOH at the end, you'll name it as oic acid. Then also you have halides. Halides were the halogens from the seventh group, 7B, in the periodic table. That is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so on. Now, their names would be called as flo... How do you call them? Fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodine. Okay? Okay, now in the naming system itself, you have two types of naming systems. One is the IUPAC naming system. IUPAC is the systematic naming. It has rules and uh, it is, it's a, it's like a, what do you call this? It is a, it's an organization which is meant for naming anything to do with chemistry. Like naming chemicals, that is an organization. And they name them, uh, with proper rules and naming systems and everything, they follow proper rules to name it. Okay, so all these names that we have been used that we have been using now are part of the IUPAC system. Okay, like alkenes will have a n a n, uh, alkenes will have e n at the end, alcohols will have all at the end. All these rules that we learned are part of the IUPAC system. The the full form is International Union of pure and applied chemistry. Okay, so they, they're an organization that, they're one of the workers naming um, compounds. Now there's another naming system which is called the trivial system or the common names. Trivial system is an older system and there was no proper rule for naming anything. They just simply named it based on its properties. 
whatever is visible or anything like for example water is the is water the iupsc name or the trivial name what is the formula of water so the actual iupsc name for h2 would be hydrogen oxide or something like that so that is the iupsc name but what do we call it we call it water that's a trivial system common name any name it has no rule it just came up okay so which was first the trivial name or the iupsc name which one was first trivial yeah first long time back adam and eve would have called it water did they know water was made up of hydrogen and oxygen no so before you know the chemical substance the molecular formula and all that that is when the common names came up first okay so when the name uh, when the common naming came it was based on source means where it was found properties of that particular substance or latin or greek origin okay so that is some uh, based on its based on these factors they named it for example methane was called as marsh gas okay why was it called marsh gas because its source was marshes you know what a marsh is it's a place where there's water just logging in uh, plants growing over there and uh, it's like a forest area with water just logged that's a marsh so in that area they found this gas first time so that's how they named it marsh gas later on they found out okay what is this marsh gas and then they checked its components and they found out okay it is one carbon four hydrogens see the components the constituents of that marsh gas they came to know came to know when much later on right so common naming was first acetic acid okay acetic acids common name is vinegar we all use vinegar but the actual iupac name of vinegar is what acetic acid okay so like that all right so let us see the trivial name for all of these six homologous series okay so let's go to this table over here here you can see the iupac name and the common name okay so first is for the alkanes now alkanes there is no difference between the iupac name and the common name methane is methane ethane ethane propane propane butane butane so here is the same the iupac name and the trivial name is the same for alkanes okay next alkenes look at the alkenes so ethene is called ethylene propene propylene butene butylene so instead of en they call it ethylene store it in your mind Did you get it the common name for alkane for uh, ethene is what ethylene propene pentene pentylene and so on okay next alkynes alkynes is a little different so uh, you need to remember that if there's one carbon atom there's one carbon they use the word form if there's two carbons they use the word acet okay this will be used quite a lot in the common naming system one carbon will start with the word form and two carbons will start with the word acet okay this is remember these two things okay now ethyne so ethyne look at ethyne ethyne has how many carbons two so they're calling it acetylene these are the acet and then ethylene same like the alkenes okay so the naming is like the alkenes only you're using ethylene at the end okay but with some modifications so you have to say acetylene for every every name look you see acetylene is there everywhere now acetylene has in how many carbons acetylene means two carbons so propyne propyne has how many carbons three so what they do with the three is they will split it into two and remaining how many are there one, one. so that two will be acetylene and one carbon is called what meth right so they say methyl okay so methyl acetylene is propyne let's take another uh, carbon which has uh, carbon compound with five what is a alkyne that has five carbon atoms pentyne pentyne no yes. we're talking about alkynes okay we're learning about common name for alkynes now so five will be separated as two two at the end 
and remaining how many three so the two will yeah the three is profile and the two will be acetyl got it this is the naming system for al kinds is much clear for now <coughs> okay for alcohols it's easy so methanol you just call it methyl alcohol put the actual alcohol at the end of it so ethanol would be methyl <laughs> alcohol Pen pentanol would be <laughs> pentyl alcohol okay and so on yeah it gets a little confusing when you but these are the rules okay aldehydes no now here they're using that one see methanol is one form so form aldehyde ethanol acid, acid aldehyde they're using that aldehyde only at the end then it gets again a little more complex propanol is propion aldehyde propion yeah they are not very important you don't need to remember so most of them then carboxylic acid you're using the word acid at the end so again methanoic acid is formic acid ethanoic acid is acetic acid see what is acetic acid vinegar yes we saw them before so this is vinegar ethanoic acid is vinegar what's the formula for vinegar ch3coh okay and then propionic acid is propionic acid so that's enough so once again revision for alkanes the common name is exactly same as the iupac name for alkenes instead of ene we'll say ilene for alkynes you have to use the word acetylene at the end so you are separating the carbon into whatever and two two has to be there two is the acetylene okay and the first word you'll call il that's there for everything actually next also alcohol alcohol is easy methanol means methyl alcohol aldehyde is also easy you have to put aldehyde at the end so methanol means yeah see it's not methaldehyde eh? remember for aldehydes they're using this form and acid carboxylic acid again form and acid they're using and they're using the word acid at the end got an idea about it okay mm -hmm. not very important naming uh, the common name but you need to know it okay now coming to the imp most important part of the chapter that is the naming system okay naming in the iupac system okay so let's uh, we we all we already know the naming if it is in a straight line uh, yeah before naming so there's still one more thing that was left that is for alcohols aldehydes and for carboxylic acid how do you write these names oh cho and coh how do you actually place it okay so this is how it is for alcohols we put oh as a single bond so single bond oh that has to be added to any carbon like you have so many carbon chain carbon atoms right to any one of the carbon atoms you have to put this bond with oh now look at this aldehyde is a little different it's a cho but look at how cho has to be written Did you see this Hmm. Look at how CHO is written. So to that one carbon, whichever carbon, there's a double bond O and a single bond H. We'll we'll see an example of each. And then look at how COOH is written. So with one carbon, any of the carbon, you have a double bond O and a single bond OH. This is the structure of COOH. Okay. So let's take uh, the three carbon compound. What is three carbon compound? Three carbon compound is starting with what? Prop. Prop, prop, right? So let's draw all the props. That is propane, propene, propyne, propanol, propanal, and propanoic acid. Okay. All right. So first one. Propane. All right. What's the formula? C 
Do the calculation and tell me the number of atoms. Eight. Three into two, six plus two, right? Yes. All right. So this you know how to draw it. You just have three carbons in a chain first, and then you have to uh, fill up the remaining with bonds. Remember, the first class we learned this. Okay, and then you write hydrogen and everything. <clears throat> okay. So you all do the propane, propene, and propyne first. Then I will show you how to do. Propanol, propanal, and propanoic acid. You all remember, right? Propane will have one, like all single bonds. Propene will have double. one double bond. And propyne will have one, one triple bond. So do that first. <clears throat> this much is done? Yeah. Ready? Propanol. Tell me the formula for propanol. C3H7OH. Do you know how to get it, all of you? Only I heard one person. The general formula was what? CNH2N plus 1 OH. Check it. You have written it down. Last class we did that. Yes. Okay, so this is, this is the formula for propanol. Yes? Yes. Okay, so let's draw it now. So again, we start drawing with the carbons, three carbons. Hmm? Now, all, all of them have only single bonds. No double bond, no triple bonded, okay? All single bonds. Next, you need a OH. It can be anywhere, but draw the OH at the end. So how do we draw the OH? At the last carbon or the first, doesn't matter. Either the beginning or the end is the same. So we'll put one single bond, OH. Any direction, okay, up, down, left, right, doesn't matter. Okay. Then you fill up the rest. Do this first, and then you fill up the rest. Fill up the rest means draw the bonds, then write the hydrogen. There will be seven. See, this OH is different. Yeah, OH, this is OH, no? So OH is here. See, we have done this much. Three carbons are there, OH is there. So what is remaining? Seven hydrogens. So fill up the remaining bonds first, and then fill it up with hydrogens. Finished? What does it look like? Yes. It looks like propane. It's just that instead of one H, you have OH. OH. You see that? That's why they say that all of these, propanol, propanol, propanoic acid, they're all, what's that word I'm not getting? It's like, it's like derivatives of alkanes. It's like an alkane. But you're just changing one of the hydrogen to something else. Like instead of hydrogen, you're putting that functional group, OH. Okay, now let's look at the next one. So what's propanal now? <clears throat> yeah, but when you write, we don't put C3, we'll put only C2H. Instead of seven, we'll put only... Five. And then COH. Oh, sorry, CHO. I mean, you can do it in the two steps. First, you have the general formula, and then you separate the CHO to one end, and then you'll get this. Okay? All right. So how do we draw this? So how many carbons do we draw? No, we draw three. Okay? But only thing, one of the carbon, see, is like this. It will have a double bond O, single bond H. You saw this? So for the last carbon, we'll do that. Yeah, do it for the last. It can be anywhere. The name will change. Instead of propanal, then we have to put... The general formula is only to get the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's all. But when we write it, we have to write in this format. Okay? So doing two steps. First, you write the general formula, get the numbers, and then you put this. I don't. I directly went to the second step because I've already done it. Okay, so to this last carbon, we'll put this double bond O, single bond H. Okay, this much is that CHO. Then you fill up the rest. Fill it up with the bonds. How many bonds are needed? Fill it up. 
Here any more bonds for this? No. no. So then hydrogen, hydrogen everywhere. See now if you look. Yeah, in this section over here, how many carbons, how many hydrogens? Two carbons and five hydrogens. And that CHO was separately outside. And that C was part of the chain. Got it? Okay, draw this. Okay, so if you know how to draw propanol, then you can also draw propanoic acid. You see the structure and the last carbon, how it is? Instead of double bond single H, it's double bond with OH. So all of you draw propanoic acid now. Write the general formula, write the actual formula and draw the structure. So it is same like this. What's the change? Yeah. This will be OH. That's it, right? And the name? Formula is what? C2? H5COH. So just an extra oxygen that goes here along with that hydrogen. The bond here is it to hydrogen or is it or is it to the oxygen? It is to the oxygen. Okay, so you have to draw that also correctly. OH. So actually how it is now it's like this O H. This is actually how it is. See, look. Oxygen needs how many bonds? We studied in the second chapter. Oxygen has how many electrons in the outermost orbit? Six. So it needs two bonds, right? See, that's why it has two bonds. See, one here, one here. Yeah. And hydrogen has how many, needs how many bonds? Hydrogen has only one electron, so it needs to share one. So hydrogen has a single bond. All these bonds are the electrons that are taking part in the sharing. All of these are sharing. Carbon has how many electrons in the outermost orbit? Tetravalency, one of the property of carbon. Tetravalency. Tetravalency means what? Four, right? So carbon needs how many electrons? Four. So it has to share four. That's why you see every carbon is sharing four. It has four bonds. Look at that. That's why that's the first thing we did. No, every carbon should have four bonds. Oxygen should have how many bonds? Two bonds. Hydrogen should have how many bonds? One bond. Bromine should have how many bonds? Bromine is in one. the seventh group. One. one, because it has seven electrons. It needs one more, so it needs one. Nitrogen needs how many bonds? Three. Because nitrogen has five electrons in the outermost orbit, so it needs three more, so triple bond it needs. So these bonds are based on how many electrons they have in the outermost orbit. Is that clear, everyone? Yes. Okay. Oxygen, look at this oxygen. How many bonds does it need? That's why it has two bonds, but to the same carbon. This oxygen also needs two bonds, but it has two separate bonds. One to this hydrogen, one to the carbon. This oxygen has two bonds to the same carbon. So they're all following those rules, okay? So if you see, the bond here is between the oxygen and the carbon. So when you draw it also, you don't have to draw ONH separately like this. You can write as OH, but you have to show that the bond is to the oxygen, not to the hydrogen. So bond should be to the oxygen. Check what you do. <clears throat> That's very important. You lose mark for that if you show the bond to the wrong atom. Okay. Now only we can go into the naming. We still haven't gone into the branch chain. The branch chains, how to name it, that is coming now only. So yeah, it's a uh, it's quite easy if you understand it. If you don't understand, it'll be the most difficult. So what, what to do? Should we do this naming system? It will take around 10 minutes more. If you finish that, then that's one big thing done in this chapter. Shall we just do that? Okay. All right. So we'll go through this uh, from the textbook here. Now look at this compound here. So this CH3, CH2. You know what's the meaning of CH3, right? It means one carbon with three hydrogens. So here we don't draw them as branched chains. We're drawing them as condensed chain. Okay. So CH3, CH2, CH, CH2, CH3, and there's an extra alkyl group that is joint. Remember the alkyl groups? What is alkyl groups? Alkyl group is having this formula CNH2N two N plus one. They'll be they'll have this word at the end, I. Right. So if one carbon, then it is called 
methyl. Two carbons, ethyl and so on. Okay. All right. So here there is a alkyl group attached to the main carbon chain. Okay. All right. The rule one is find the longest chain. It doesn't have to be a straight chain. It can be turned or whatever, but it has to be a continuous single longest chain in the whole thing. So here the longest chain is this one. Did you get it? Okay. So since the longest chain is having five carbons, the root word, the root word means the main name for this compound would be pent. Because it's five. Don't look at the total number of carbons. Totally how many carbons are there? Six. So don't name it, name it hex. You're naming it based on the single longest chain. That's the first rule. Clear? All right. Next, next is numbering. <clears throat> now to number it, you will number the carbons one, two, three, four, five. But to number it, there are many, many different options. Okay, so you have to study those. So let's let me just draw. I'll just draw the carbons. So you can number it either from the left or from the right. If you number from the left, then it will be. Let me open a new one. This is hanging. Yeah, so either you can start one, two, three, this way you can go, or you can go the other way, okay? But that depends on many factors. So let's see what each of them are. First thing is, if there is a <clears throat> alkyl group, like the CH3, wherever it is closer to, from that side, you will start the numbering. So look, the CH3 is closer to the right side. So you start numbering from the right side. So this is one, do you see it clearly? Yeah, so one, two, three, four. Don't start numbering from the left. One, two, three, four. Okay? Because see, if you number from the left, then this alkyl group is attached to the third carbon. And if you number from the right, it's to the second. So the number should be small as possible, as small as you can. That's why you're starting numbering from wherever the alkyl group is closer to. That's the first rule in numbering. Is that clear? Okay. Next, what if there is, yeah, so if there's an alkyl group, you make the alkyl group have the smaller number. For example, if there is a carbon here, then where do you start numbering from? Left. 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 Okay, now suppose instead of carbon, suppose there's a functional group like CHO. CHO means how? Double bond O, single bond H. This is how CHO is, right? Yes. So since a, fun a functional group is to the left, you start numbering from the left. One, two, three, and so on. Hmm? Same. Whatever is there, if there's a functional group or an um, alkyl group, you start numbering from that side. Now, what if there are both? If there's functional group and alkyl group, look at this. Here you have alkyl group, here you have functional group. So then which one to give the smaller number to? The functional group. Okay, see they have given more priority to which one? The functional group. Okay, so since functional group is on the right side, they started numbering from the right side. Got it? If there's alkyl group, give that the smaller number. If there's functional group, give that the small number. If both are there, then give the smaller number to functional group. Okay, that is the next rule. Next, what if there are two functional groups? See, bromo and chloro. You see, both are functional groups. So then which one to give the smaller number to? Then they go alphabetic order. Okay, now bromine starts with a B, chlorine starts with a C. So B is alphabetic order B is first, right? So then you're giving the smaller number to B. It doesn't matter which is on the left, which is closer to the right, no. If two functional group, just go with the alphabetic order. Is that clear? Next, here there are two alkyl groups. Here, what do we have? CS3, that is methyl. And here we have, tell the name, ethyl. Now, which one to give this uh, smaller number to? Based on the car based on the number of carbon. So here there's only one carbon, here there's two carbon, right? So the smaller one has one the one the one which has lesser number of carbons, from there you start the numbering. These are the rules for numbering. That's it. Is that clear? <clears throat> so once again, if there's alkyl, just give that the smaller number. If there's functional group, give that the smaller number. If there is both alkyl and functional, then functional gets a smaller number. What if there are two functional groups? Alphabetic order. If there are two alkyl groups, then one with the lesser carbon gets a smaller number. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now let's see the naming. <clears throat> 
look at look at this so here how many carbons in the longest four. chain longest chain four so we have to use the name butane okay butane and then where is this function uh, where is this alkyl group it's on which attached to which carbon second carbon right so we have to say two and the, uh, the alkyl group is methyl so two methyl butane Understood? Okay, now what if here? Wait, I, I'll write the name. Okay, if you read this name, you'll not understand. So here, here we have an alkyl group and a functional group. So as we said before, the functional group gets a smaller number. Okay. Now, what is the longest carbon chain? Five. Five. So it'll be pent. Pent. That is the, the root word. Okay, but now there is a oh, there's OH. So the name will not be pentane. It'll be pentanol. Pentanol, right? But where is this OH? To which carbon? Second. So I have to put pentane to all. Instead of pentanol, in between that nol, I'm putting the number of the carbon. See, all this while previously when we're doing. We had attached the OH where? To the end. So that was at the first carbon. So whenever it's at the first carbon atom, we don't have to put pentane one all. Just put pentanol. It's understood that the OH is at the one, first carbon. But if the OH is not at the first, you have to write the number. Is that clear? So pentane two all means the OH is attached to the second carbon atom. Okay, then you have a CH3. Where is the CH3 attached to? Four. So this is a methyl attached to the fourth carbon. So in the beginning we have to put four methyl. Is that clear? So four methyl pentane two all. All right. Now when do we put dashes? A dash should be put always between a number and an alphabet. So here we have number alphabet. So between this we put a dash. <clears throat> then pentane here also number. So between that, we have to put the dash. So just look at this. The functional group is written at the end and the alkyl group has to be written at the beginning. This is very important to remember. What did I say? Yeah, the functional group is all, all al or oic acid, right? So that is always at the end only, no? You can't write that at the beginning. And what you write at the beginning is alkyl group. Now, in the functional group, you also have halides, no? Yes. Halides have to be written in the beginning. Okay, so many rules are there. Okay, what to do? It's there. You have to learn it. See, it's simple like this. Functional group is normally all al oic acid. That has to be at the end. But if it's bromo chloro, you can't put at the end. How you'll put like pentanol chloro? No. So what they do? They put in the beginning. So chloro, bromo, iodo, all those halides, even though they are functional groups, you have to put them in the beginning. Is that clear? The alkyl groups will always be in the beginning only. That never changes. Okay. Now, come here. Look here. You have bromo and chloro. So, bromo and chloro both are functional groups, but they are halides. So, you have to put them in the beginning. Okay. So, look at this name. 2 bromo, 4 chloro, pentane. Again, why bromo first, chloro second? Bromo. Alphabetical order. So, numbering time also, you are doing an alphabetical order. Naming it also, alphabetical order. So both are two different things. Numbering, we, we saw that before, alphabetical order. But when we're writing it also, we have to follow alphabetical order. Now look at the alkyl. Two alkyls are there. So what was the rule of numbering? Lesser. The lesser carbon will get the smaller number. But when you're writing it, we have to write in alphabetical order. Okay. So you see at the four, there was an ethyl. So we wrote ethyl first, not methyl first. Because alphabetical order. E comes first. M comes afterwards, right? So first we write the ethyl, then we write the methyl. Is that clear, everyone? That's all. Nothing too much. There's little more. But for now, I think that much is enough for you. Okay? So what was the rule if there are two uh, functional groups like bromo and chloro? Yeah, when you're naming it, you name it alphabetical order. When you're writing it also, you write in alphabetical order. If there are two alkyls, when you're numbering it, you put the smaller number for the lesser carbon and when you're writing it alphabetical order see if this is this name correct how does this make sense 
first you're looking at the number of carbon in the longest chain. So there are seven. So that's why we use the word hept. Ain because there is no all or al or oic acid, right? There is no OH, CHO, COH, so heptane. There are only two alkyl groups. And so uh, at the fourth carbon, we have ethyl. And at the fifth, we have, no, sorry. Yeah, at the fourth, we have ethyl. And at the third, you have methyl. Four ethyl, three methyl, heptane. Okay. Is this much clear? Yes. There's a little more, but that we will see in the next class.